St. Mark's Square in Italy is famous for a lot of things. The pigeons and St. Mark's Basilica are probably the most notable, but other must-see attractions are these four horses that appear on the facade of St. Mark's Basilica. These four horses are as famous for their physical form as they are for the histories that they have witnessed. They have seen, at the very least, the height of the Byzantine Empire, the Fourth Crusade, Venice during the Renaissance, and Napoleon's France, in addition to modern history like the unification of Italy and that flood that Venice had last year. And it's the story of these horses that is the topic for today's video. Since as early as the 16th century, people have traveled to this city for the expressed purpose of seeing these horses. But the horses have been at this location for a bit longer than that. They arrived at this location in St. Mark's Square in the early 13th century. Okay, well not quite this location. In fact, these images I've been showing of the horses on the facade of the basilica have been a little misleading. These are replicas of the horses that I'm actually talking about. The real horses are too important to be left to the elements. The real ones are kept inside, nice and safe. And these real ones arrived in St. Mark's Square in the early 13th century. I say arrived on purpose. They didn't originate here. They are not Venetian art. No, they were stolen from the city of Constantinople and brought to this location in the years following the Fourth Crusade. The Fourth Crusade is a complicated story, but let's see how quickly I can do this. Pope Innocent III succeeded to the papacy in 1198 and called for a crusade. Most of Europe ignored him because the crusade had not been going too well. Despite that, the Catholic Church purchased a bunch of ships from Venice so that they could transport soldiers and fight Muslims in the city of Jerusalem. That's what a crusade is. But like I said, the church had a difficult time fundraising the money to actually buy these ships because no one really wanted to crusade. So the Venetians made good on their part of the contract and built the ships, but the church could not make good on its side of the contract and actually pay for them. So to make up the money, the Venetians went to the crusade themselves, stopped by the Christian city of Constantinople on their way, found themselves unwelcome in Constantinople because of some internal political issues that were happening inside the Byzantine Empire at the time, and, well, the Venetian fleet decided to forego the trip to Jerusalem and just fight their way into the city of Constantinople instead so that they could steal a bunch of stuff and make back the money that they lost in the original contract. And among the stuff that they stole were these horses. They were packed up and shipped to Venice, and that's how they got to St. Mark's Square. And knowing that history, these horses were plundered from somewhere else, it gives me some complicated feelings. Typically, my thought on plundered art is that it should be returned, but the case of these horses complicates that issue for me. There's the obvious issue that the Byzantine Empire doesn't exist anymore, and neither does Constantinople, it's Istanbul now, but also, these horses just seem to belong in Venice. Don't worry, I'll explain what I mean by that. First, I need to say something about the city of Venice. It's built on a lagoon. Its origins are pretty unclear, but its first inhabitants seem to be refugees during the later years of the Roman Empire as people fled from war. In the absence of a clear history or foundation, the foundation myths surrounding the city include a jumble of Greek, Roman, and early Christian themes. The stories these early inhabitants told themselves about their heritage comes from everything classical. Like, it claims to have a foundation date of March 25th, 421, March 25th being both the date of the Annunciation and the date that they believed to coincide with the founding of Rome. So because there is no heroic foundation of the city, the people of Venice started telling stories and created a sort of Venetian mythology that's a mix of everything that they thought was cool at the time. Again, it's a lagoon. It didn't exist as a city during the Roman Empire. It doesn't have a link to important figures in Christianity. And it certainly doesn't have a link to any of ancient Greece. And because it's disconnected from all this history, the inhabitants used all of it. They mixed up Greek, Roman, and Christian ingredients and built something original. Like this lion in St. Mark's Square. It's become a symbol of the city, and most historians think that this particular lion was forged in the ancient Greek world sometime in the 300 BCE. Now we call that the Lion of St. Mark's Square, and we tell stories about how it's based on a description of Jesus Christ in the Gospel of Mark. But like, none of that is true. 
The sculpture predates the Gospel of Mark. It predates Christ. It's an example of how Venetian mythology is just a big mix of other mythologies. Also, like, everything is a remix, so the original Greek sculpture was probably pulling from Egyptian or Assyrian mythologies in addition to a bunch of other stuff as well, and we can probably make a similar claim about any mythology being a mix of previous mythologies. This isn't just a Venetian thing. But back to Venice. As a lagoon, it doesn't have many natural resources. You can't mine for metals here, or graze a bunch of sheep there. It doesn't have the raw materials for a productive trade. It is a hell of a port city, though. The value that Venice has in the economy is that of a connection between Europe and Asia. During the medieval period, the raw materials produced in Western Europe were funneled through Venice and sent east. And going the other way, luxury items in the east arrived in Venice and were distributed throughout Western Europe. It's a place that connects cultures, and so it takes its heritage from many different traditions. The trade connects different areas, the stories that they created about their history connect different traditions, and this is reflected in how their buildings look as well. Of the 600 marble columns in St. Mark's, for example, about 280 of them come from outside Italy and were originally parts of other buildings in other cities. This building is constructed of other buildings from other places. Venice, both the city and the mythology that surrounds it, has been constructed using diverse elements of the classical past from different places. And I haven't even brought this up yet, but the name of the square and this basilica, St. Mark's, it's named that because in the 9th century, some Venetians claimed to have stolen the body of St. Mark from Alexandria in Egypt and brought it here. Before that, St. Theodore was the patron saint of this city. Everything in this city is imported, even its patron saint. But this video is supposed to be about these horses, so let's return to them. During the Roman period, when a general came back to the capital city victorious, he would lead a procession into the city including the spoils of war. He would parade the prisoners taken, the statues, obelisks, and whatever else the soldiers had looted. At the head of that procession, the general would ride on a chariot powered by four horses, a quadriga as it's called. The horses, now residing in St. Mark's, were most likely originally sculpted to represent a victorious general and his plunder. And with the Venetian conquest of Constantinople, the horses themselves became plunder. How appropriate. But it's not like those horses were originally forged in Constantinople either. It's not like these were stolen from the culture that they blossomed out of and reappropriated in some foreign culture. Historians have been assigning authorship to these statues for hundreds of years. They've been attributed to Phidias, his contemporary Praxiteles and to Lysippus, the favored sculpture of Alexander the Great, and that is just to name some of the Greek attributions. They've also been assigned to any number of Roman sculptors since that theme of conquering general was pretty common during the Roman period. Art historians can't even agree on a century. They've been dated to both Greece and Rome, and sure, there are some people that even say Constantinople could have been the original location. They began their life, most likely, on a Greek island somewhere, bounced around the Roman Empire, and eventually were propped up at the Hippodrome, a horse track, in the capital city of the Byzantine Empire, Constantinople, before being looted and displayed on the front of the Basilica in Venice. But their story does not stop there. In another remarkable turn of events for these horses, they were looted from Venice in 1797 when Napoleon had them forcibly removed from the Basilica and installed in Paris. When he did, they arrived in Paris with a banner that read, Horses transported from Corinth to Rome, and from Rome to Constantinople, from Constantinople to Venice, and from Venice to France. They are finally in a free land. If these horses could talk... Stories they would tell. No one can confidently say where these horses were first sculpted or by who. We just know that plenty of different cultures projected an important heritage onto them. We know they have a classical past and that they witnessed a lot of history. And these forces combine to suffuse the sculptures with a bit of magic for me. Additionally, the horses do not look like any horses in particular. It's impossible to distinguish a breed. The necks are disproportionately large, the legs are disproportionately long, and the back disproportionately short. 
Partly, this can be explained by understanding that these horses were probably meant to be viewed from below, but partly this can be viewed in the classical tradition of attempting to perfect nature in art. The classicist Nigel Spivy, when talking about a horse sculpted into the pediment of the Parthenon, once said that it is at once astonishingly true to life and yet unlike any horse we have ever seen. The same could be said of these horses. They've become something much greater than copper manipulated into the shape of a horse. The original meaning, whatever it may have been, has dissolved, and what remains is the ideal quadriga, a platonic image of triumph, plunder, and empire that witnessed, at the very least, the height of the Byzantine Empire, the Venetian Golden Age, and Napoleonic France. So just as they appear to us, the image of horses, while resembling no specific breed of horse, they also appear to us as coming from a vaguely classical past, while coming from no specific location or culture. They have consequently found a home in a city built on a lagoon that has constructed its own heritage from everywhere and nowhere at once. The horses are not modeled on any one horse, and Venice is not modeled from any one historical tradition, but they both give shape to these unknowable stories of the past, and that's why they seem to belong here in Venice. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. I put out a new video about once a month. Thank you for watching.